Good evening. Welcome once again. So happy to be here together. Um, I'm seeing that the majority of you are hanging out on the YouTube live. And if you want to go and hang out with your family on the YouTube uh, group chat there, you can just go ahead and hop on to the YouTube channel. Um, you can search Z Earth Star Healer, the Earth Star Sanctuary. Um, and if you want to join a lively chat there, you can hop on over to YouTube. Uh, so we are so excited to gather once again. And it's so exciting holding the space because the gateway is open and I'm kind of receiving all these codes and information that is coming through that wants to be a channel, wants to be, you know, spoken. And so we're very excited to just be basking in this beautiful energy and that we get to hang out in this beautiful energy together. And I'm so happy that so many of you are resonant with this frequency. If you're wanting to support us, just go ahead and share this video with your family and friends so that they can, you know, get some of this goodness and they can help us anchor these frequencies onto the planet as well. We are engaging in planetary light work together, um, working with the planetary grid as we, you know, bring in these super high frequency truth frequencies, these codes of divine sovereignty of our original human beingness. We're really wanting to pull this energy into the collective, into the planet, so that, you know, one day all humans can exist in this vibration of knowing the truth of who we are, that we are divine, sovereign, creator beings. And so, yep, uh, today we are going to be talking about ascension very interesting concept, and um, I believe that I was born with uh, various levels of antiviral coding in my consciousness, meaning that when I was going to school, I almost had this like protective uh, energy around my mind where when I came into contact with things that were not the truth or were indoctrination, it's almost like my consciousness was just bounce it. And I'm sure that a lot of you resonate with this, you know, the indoctrination and the mind control, even though it seems to be really convincing for other people, it never actually worked that much on you because clearly you're, you know, awakened and you're not asleep right now. And so there's a certain part of you that could discern certain levels of truth from, uh, you know, the indoctrination and the mind control and the artificial frequencies. And so I feel that it's kind of like that as well. I have this kind of uh, protective uh, energy technology. Um, and it also works with different kinds of spiritual things, spiritual teachings, spiritual teachers, spiritual ideas. And specifically when it comes to certain, you know, frequencies and energies and people, it's almost like, you know, as I was growing up, as I was awaking, awakening, um, I was almost repelled and just literally pushed away from certain things. And actually, in the beginning, um, ascension was one of those things. And I just want to say right now that it's no longer. But when I was first waking up, I would encounter this word ascension and something would really feel weird about it. And for the most part, you know, there were a few people like Sandra Walter that I followed, you know, when she used the word, you know, there was an energy behind it that I resonated with that I, you know, found truth within because I could feel kind of behind the words that there was a pillar of, um, of energy or connection to source. And so for the most part, however, whenever I saw this word ascension, I was just repelled by it. And I feel that the reason for this was that I was too really explore what that word means for me and to have my own experiences so that I could, you know, explore that path and understand just exactly what it means for me in my life. And so today I want to just talk about some of those experiences that I have had that gives me a glimpse of what ascension truly is and what this word means to me in my personal life. You know, I can't again, um, claim to know uh, what other people mean when they use this word, but this is how 
um, I am beginning to understand this energy. Hi, Kay. Hi, Stephanie. So um, let's see. I feel that I want to begin the conversation from this place. And it's that I feel that beyond all the words and beyond all the descriptions, the life path that resonates with me the most is one of consistently aligning with the truth of my divinity as a human being and as a soul, and the truth of my connectedness to the oneness of all that is. And so this is my first and foremost endeavor is to continually come back to that place where I recognize myself as sacred and recognize all of life and all of creation that I am in relation with as being sacred. And as I'm waking out, uh, waking up out of the false matrix where, you know, there's very little respect for life itself, there's very little respect for, you know, our own bodies, where we're even trained to believe that our, you know, super ultra amazing miraculous vessels are just pieces of garbage or physical things to be, you know, um, experimented on, I realized that my first and foremost devotion, devotion being something that I'm committed to over and over again in the moment, right? It's just not saying, okay, I'm going to do this one moment, but recommitting to that thing, whatever it is, you know, in every moment that we're realigning with ourselves, which it should be, you know, many, many times a day. And so I know that my path and my devotion is to aligning to my sacredness and aligning to this embodiment of knowing that all of creation is sacred. And this is our original state of being, but because again, we're waking up out of this artificial matrix that is basically the opposite of that. Um, and I have explained in the past how this is basically a satanic false matrix because what Satanism really is on the most basic level is just this energy or state of being that is not in recognition or connection with the sacredness of life, right? This energy that is anti-life and that wishes to degrade and destroy the things that are beautiful and sacred, that very energy itself is what I would call satanic. Now, if you take that to the extreme, you would then go to destroy the things that are the most divine and the most beautiful and the most sacred. And so those things would be, you know, our children and women and, and people that are ritually sacrificed and so on. But the watered down version of that is existing in our common day to day life in our society, because from the time we're born, we're stamped with this barcode saying that we're just, you know, this piece of meat that is here to generate energy for the false matrix. The system does not recognize you as a divine, sovereign, creator, sacred being. And so this is our first and foremost highly important uh, devotion and uh, activity. And so then from that place, I realized that for a while, you know, I was just uh, holding space for my human self to come out of that societal degradation and slit enslavement. Um, of who I really am. And this is like, you know, you can say, oh, it's not so bad, you know, it's just making people, you know, live their whole lives and waste their energy working in a cubicle that they hate. And, you know, to me, that is actually terrible on a cosmic level because our human sacred creation energy, our creative energy or universal creation energy is the most sacred thing to me. Creation energy is the most sacred thing to me. And so if a society is, you know, not seeing that and actually, you know, forcing people to waste away this, the most sacred thing in the universe, that is a society that is anti-life. And so I would call that a satanic, you know, reality, artificial matrix. Okay. And so for many years, my job was to focus on um, reclaiming and fetching all of my inner children that was lost in that reality, that was frozen in those dimensions, that believed she was a slave and believed that she, you know, didn't deserve to live in a free way that was abundant and liberating and creative and fulfilling. And so that was my 
work. That was my work in reconnecting to myself. And so, eventually, when I, you know, process that, those parts of myself, to a certain extent, you know, and this is kind of almost like a um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs kind of thing. Like if your root chakra, if you're constantly terrified that you don't have enough money to feed yourself and survive and have a place to live, you know, that root chakra fear, it's really keeping the foundation of your light body pyramid from being strong. And so you can't really go and develop your higher capacities, right? You're, if you go on and activate your higher dimensional abilities and higher selves too fast without healing your lower chakras, your pyramid is going to topple. And this is why people go into spiritual delusion and, you know, um, uh, a lot of mental illness happens out of this because people's third eyes open and they're not prepared. They're not anchored and grounded and they're not fully in their know thyself energy before the psychic abilities open. And so I feel that then um, last year was finally when I finally sorted a lot of those things and moved out into the forest. I began to really take this path, you know, as my most important thing, as the thing that I was most devoted to. And I mean, okay, so even back in 2013, 2013 is really when I made that jumping off point where I was like, okay, the only thing that matters is spirit. But at that point, because my root chakra was still, I was still having to heal my root chakra and everything, I was not actually able to anchor my soul wholly, fully in my body. And so again, from the first seven years, my job of devotion and commitment was to pulling my soul into my body. And so when this finally happened, I realized that there was more of me that was focusing on this idea of spiritual and energetic mastery. You know, now that I'm not questioning where my meal's going to come from and wondering if anybody likes me and wondering if I'm even worthy of being alive, you know, all of those, you know, little inner children, egoic things that we have all been, uh, the sh society has shoved it all up our bodies. Um, only once we have processed all those things did my mind actually free up, did the energy actually become available for me to understand and experience, you know, some of these more profound levels what, of what I now call ascension. So I want to tell this little story. Some of you have been following me, you know, last year when all of this were happening. And I know that I have a lot of new family members that are just finding my work. And so I uh, even for those of you that, you know, were around back in June I, when I first made this video about my angel baby, I just want to give you guys an update because I'm still working daily with Kara. <laughs> and so I just want to tell the story real quick. So back um, in July of 2019, I literally just moved to the land with my husband and I immediately became pregnant. And... Um, I didn't know, actually, for a few months, but before I became pregnant, this little girl, actually, she showed up as a boy. <laughs> actually, she showed up as this full-grown man that was Mayan. And when he showed up, he was like, I'm coming in. And then this other part of him that looked like this angel with three pairs of wings um, flew up on uh, towards me, and it opened his hand, and this fire just appeared and he or she said I'm coming to teach you how to materialize things out of thin air and so uh, at that time I was practicing these practices that basically allowed me to control it's like you know spiritual birth control you know these bodies are conscious and we can decide you know when and when not we desire or not to be pregnant and so I was doing these, you know, concentration and meditation practices that, you know, worked for, you know, the whole year, year and a half that I was already with my husband. And so this baby came in. She's like, first of all, I need you to stop doing those practices because I'm coming in. And second of all, I'm coming in to teach you how to materialize things from thin air. And so I thought I was going to immediately be pregnant, and I wasn't. But when we moved onto the land, I immediately became pregnant. 
And so three months in, I began to commune with this child, and she basically started to tell me that she was the teacher of my soul and that, you know, she then continued to actually download this entire curriculum of a womb healing return of the original feminine frequency class um, that was really powerful for, I think there was 70 women that was a part of that group. And we channeled, I literally woke up at three in the morning and just like channeled the whole thing. I could see her and my ancestors and the masters that were, you know, sharing these teachings. And so um, I gave birth to her. She told me that she was coming in through the Cygnus constellation. And so on the day that she was born, on May 20th, 2020, which is the day the Earth, the Sun, and the Pleiades were in full alignment, um, she was born, and there was this comet. I, I saw it on the news. It was saying, like, Comet Cygnus, you know, was shooting across the sky, arrived within a view of the planet. Um, and so she was with me for nine days. And on May 29th, she actually transitioned into the next density of our reality, where she is now. And that was an extremely difficult experience, obviously, because I had fallen in love with this being. And at first, you know, I really was just in shock, obviously. But um, after the months where I really began to just allow myself to unravel and fall apart and cry on the ground, eventually she would come in and check on me and say, hey, you know, are you ready yet? Maybe it's time to go back to the office because our work is just beginning. And if you start working, if you start writing, if you start teaching, if you start doing your healing work again, then you will see that, you know, I'm not gone. I am just in a higher dimension where I can be most of service at this time. And so that was true. <laughs> And there was a crazy moment. I remember I was on the floor and just weeping horrendously, feeling so betrayed by God, feeling just like I was literally flipping God off, just being like, you know, screw you. I can't believe you did this to me. And then I felt her, I felt her energy come in and she just wrapped her wings around me. And as she did that, I began to feel this density, this pain, this pain that was coming from this perception of separation. This perception that, you know, I had lost her and that, you know, and that means that, you know, I, I don't have her anymore and she's not here with me. And as I'm finally allowing her love and her grace to come in to hold me and to help me process these energies, I began to, again, mer once again, merge with her awareness. Um, and actually, when she transitioned for three days after, um, I could not sleep because she pulled me to the other side. And I was literally, I couldn't even cry, I couldn't even process. I was just in a state of like ecstatic cosmic union. And I, that's really, that was difficult for my human self to understand because, you know, we're, I was told that the correct response was to, you know, be really depressed for years and that my marriage would fall apart and that we were never going to be the same again. And all of these kind of programs and how, how a good mother should respond to the situation. But she literally pulled my soul up into this higher dimensional reality where I was just so overwhelmed with the cosmic oneness and the love that exists that unites all things in the universe that I really couldn't, you know, go and process any of those things. And of course, when that, when, when she finally let me come back to my body, it took a couple months to really go in. And, you know, I'm lucky that I've spent almost a decade, you know, caring for my sad parts and stuff. And I, I'm, I know that that's what carried me through. But in that moment, as her wings were around me and she was helping me process this pain, even those parts that were in that level of agony began to realize the truth that there was no separation between this dense dimension and the very next one and the very next one and the higher density realities where other aspects of ourself and higher aspects of our own consciousness exist. 
And so as she pulled my awareness, what seems to be upwards, um, and I felt this density released in my body, I realized that if I pulled my body, if I released you know, all the density from my body and allowed this energy to pull my body all the way up to the frequency where she was, then I would literally be able to manifest or create things out of thin air, that I would literally be in a higher dimensional um, fabric of reality that you know my body would have different um, skills and <laughs> I would have different powers. And so when I finally realized that you know she was helping me to ascend, um, all of a sudden I flashed back to the moment when she showed me that she was coming to uh, teach me how to materialize things from thin air. Because actually, you know, for two months I was yelling at her like, I thought you were going to teach me things. Like, wow, well, how could you abandon me now? And so she was really happy that I finally got it. And she was kind of flying and rippling across the sky. And just, she was very happy. And so, yes, I feel that I am very much in the very beginning of this exploration, clearly. And that there were very many ways that could have responded to that experience. But I know that this soul is here to walk in mastery. Is he here to always be open, devoted to staying open to all of the lessons and the soul level experiences that we're here to have, even if it's the most devastating thing, right? Even if it's just the most ridiculously um, agonizing thing to our human self. Uh, because I later realized, so how I know that her name was Kara, I literally woke up at five in the morning one day, and I could just, you know, when you're kind of between sleep and waking, and I looked down, and there was literally this ripple of energy coming from my belly, and it was screaming, Kara, 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 Kara. <laughs> and at that time, I was, you know, thinking about all these names. I was going to name her like Juniper or something. And I was like, OK, I hear you. You know, she's like, I wasn't sure how thick you were, you know, on that thick dimension of yours. So I had to just make sure. And so she told me her name is Kara. And it wasn't until, you know, quite recently when I made the connection that Kara actually is Ka and Ra. And Ka is the name of our light body. And Ra symbolizes, you know, the solar energy or the enlightenment energy. And so, you know, her intention beyond her role, you know, I also have learned that her cosmic galactic mission was to actually activate a piece of our Stargate and to bring in these new codes. And she told me that she was a shooting star and that now she's just in the very close, very close dimension to us. And that's her mission. And that that's why we had to do the things in the way that we had to. And that, you know, later on, I will have other children, but she needed somebody to agree to this level of grid work. <laughs> and that, of course, sounds just absolutely insane still to my human self. But I deeply know that that is, you know, what had happened just because of the spiritual things that I have experienced. And so when I realized that her name was literally Ka Ra, um, I realize that's literally what she has been helping me do is to activate and liberate and enlighten my light body and to help me ascend. And, you know, of course, the level of pain that this experience triggered, um, you know, I was basically inside of a healing ceremony for two months and the amount of density I was able to release in that experience, um, you know, I feel that it was all preparing me for, you know, my mission on Earth and this year and beyond. And also just this understanding that, you know, I, I find that it's easy to be all spiritual until shit hits the fan. And then we want to run back to our comforts and our human self. You know, it's like we can say, oh, all dimensions are one and the physical reality is only, you know, separate from source and that's that's actually only an illusion and we can say those things for so long but then when 
something like this happens, you know, do we allow ourselves to respond to it in a new way? Do we allow ourselves to be in the highest vibration that we can? And I went through all of this feelings that people were going to judge me, that I wasn't, you know, a good mother because, you know, I, I wasn't allowing myself to just completely fall apart. But, you know, I did for a long time. I did. And then I realized that, you know, I came to this point, actually, that I was like, OK, I'm done. I'm done with this life. I'm leaving. I'm going to die and I'm going to leave because this is too much. And then I realized, that actually, I came to this point where I literally, I remember the moment I was on the floor and I was like, I know why I'm here. I can't leave because I am here to uplift this planet and that matters to me and that matters to my soul and that is why I'm here. I have this mission, I have this purpose, and that is why I am going to, you know, move through this experience I'm going to move through this experience in a way that, you know, my soul intended it to. And so I feel that there is a way we can always perceive from a higher perspective, from the place of our higher self, where then we begin to experience, you know, the levels of forgiveness and peace and reconciliation and acceptance that sometimes can be hard for our human self, you know, the Life in third density, it is hard and it's difficult and it's ridiculous. And so there are so many teachings that Kara left me and that continue actually to teach me every day. We work very closely now. Actually, I get emails, you know, almost every week after my class that people are seeing her flying around, that she is showing up in people's dreams. She's, you know, as busy as me. In the other dense, in the other dimension, um, and through this experience, I have also just truly, truly experienced that there is no separation. There is no separation between the realms. And so, one of the things that we were able to do, we were able to create for humanity, is this portal between this density and the higher densities. And we have actually um, been able to open this window. Um, to assist the planet in ascending at this time. And so um, I think that I'm trying to illustrate that there is a very real human, gritty um, experience of soul and personality evolution that is not at all fluffy. It has nothing to do with the amount of times you repeat, I'm in 5D, I'm in 5D. It has actually more to do with your every moment to moment state of being and how you relate to yourself and how you relate to your loved ones and how you relate to the planet and beyond. And so I know that our ascension journey is a very personal one because we're all in different places in our journey. And I think that the most important thing is for us to just understand that we are here to consistently align to ourself, right? There can be a lot of this desire to be a martyr or like, I'm here to save the world and everything's out there. Well, the truth is that your whole mission is actually inside of your vessel. And the most important thing you can do right now is to become as activated, as alive, as sacred, and as you know expansive as you can be inside of your own body. And so, uh, I think that self-healing has become my obsession. It's like the most important thing to me. Some people need to check the stocks and to check their email and whatnot. For me, it's just checking in with my energy and seeing you know, what I can be learning from what I can be learning from every situation and every person that is in my reality. So I'm going to take one second. Just, I know that there was a lot of energy. Thank you so much for being here and receiving these frequencies and hearing my story. It means so much to us. And I hope that they are supportive and clarifying for you, that they are empowering and bring you to uh, deeper levels of lucidity and aliveness, because that is really my true intention. 
you know, I um, have a school, but it's full till the end of the year, and I am not taking on any new clients at this moment. And so these lives, they're truly just entirely because I am here to support, and I wanted to be present with you and the planet during this incredible time of transformation. And I wanted to, you know, share with you um, any level of authenticity that I can, because I definitely recognize that there's a lot of uh, weird stuff out there, stuff that is created to confuse you, stuff that comes from people who are not in integrated. And I think that is great that we all have this desire to be out there and to help and to support humanity. But that desire must start from within. That desire must start from our willingness to be masters inside of ourself, right? And our willingness to see ourselves exactly as we are and also completely understand and accept and see and acknowledge um, ourself exactly as we are and knowing that that is perfect and that just because, you know, um, it's like when we accept ourselves completely is when we can actually take steps forward. It's like this yin, this water, this nurturance energy. And so I really want to just be an agent of support for all of us that are on that journey of becoming our best self, of reclaiming ourself as a divine creator being, and knowing that that is the most important thing that we could be doing. Because, you know, then it's like we're creating the new grid system, right? The new platform, the new reality. And we think that there's a lot of programming in the New Age community that want to say that, you know, something outside of you is going to make it happen. And you're just going to wake up one day and you're going to be in heaven and it's going to be great. And, you know, uh, <laughs> you will have missed out on all the reasons why your soul wanted to be here at this time if you believe that, right? Your soul came here to experience levels of source creator of mastery that has never been seen in the universe. And that is why you're here. And so you are here to experience that creatorship embodied. And so you're here to experience that in physicality, in the reality. And you're going to experience that, that through transforming this artificial reality into heaven. And in order for us to do that, we have to create from the place where we're in heaven, right? Creation is all vibrational. It's all energetic. If you have a lot of distortions and pain and fragmented inner children and false belief systems, and then you go and try to create a new business, whatever it is, whether it's a spiritual coaching business or whatever it may be, whatever it is that you create will be in the vibration that you are in and is going to carry the same distortions that you have. And that is why in order to create new earth, we have to create that frequency inside of our body. And that requires our utmost mastery because there is just so many forces out there that are trying to keep you from doing exactly that. And so um, with that being said, I want to move into our healing ceremony for the day. And Today that, let's see, I'm just going to read this question real quick. How does one wake up the senses in such a way that one can actually do the inner work? Some of us feel deaf and dumb. Okay, so some of you are not going to like this answer <laughs> because you're going to be like, oh, I have to work really hard. I wish somebody could just do it for me. <laughs> but the truth is, I personally feel that I work with a, mod uh, a modified Vipassana practice, and I also have a active embodied healing practice. And the Vipassana practice you can find on my YouTube channel. Just search how to meditate in my YouTube um, channel. Um, back in 2015, before I was coming to this land, I actually went for a 10-day Vipassana silent meditation retreat. 
And during that retreat, um, Buddha and my higher self <laughs> came in and showed me different upgrades we can have because he said that that practice was really created thousands of years ago for human consciousness that existed thousands of years ago. And in order for that practice to be applied to modern people, there needed to be certain shifts to it. And so, um, so that is the meditation technique that I now share. Uh, actually, the funny story is that on the eighth day, I went to the meditation teacher and I told her that um, I was hanging out with Buddha and, and they, her face turned white and she kicked me out of the retreat. <laughs> And um, she did this in this ridiculous way, too, where she just, like, drove me to this bus station, and I had no money. She just dropped me off, and I had to hitchhike back to the city, and then somebody else at that retreat, who was my friend, had a dream that the Galactics rescued me from the building because I needed a couple of extra days before going to New Mexico. <laughs> so this meditation practice is very specific, right? It's not about calming the mind, silencing the mind, trying to go somewhere else, because for the most part, you know, spiritual people want to experience spiritual stuff and you want to go out there. But the thing is, this specific meditation technique is all about going into the body, going into the body because the body is a memory bank of every single experience and frequency that you have ever experienced. And so all of the past life traumas and generation trauma and inner children trauma and all sorts of frozen emotions and all sorts of everything is all stored in the body somewhere. And the thing is that for the most part, we're just not in the right brain state, uh, mind, brainwave frequency to access those things. And so it's kind of like, um, you know, our regular state, a brainwave state is, I feel is very jagged. It's very big. And so it's like we can feel, if I did this, I'd feel it. If I did this, I feel it. But if I did this, I might not even feel it, right? Our energy body are even more subtle than that. And so it takes time for us to actually diligently go in and calm our senses. And that's especially hard in the world we have today when everything is about fast-moving energy and entertainment all the time. For us to sink into the slow, vibratory, subtle energy field, this is a practice all on its own. And so I know that this is the best way for you to develop your psychic abilities because you're, we don't hit birds, and so we really need a different uh, saying. We're not hitting birds, but it's doing two things when you're doing one thing. <laughs> so... As you're meditating and cultivating your subtle body awareness, where literally everything, every karma, every memory, every trauma in all lifetimes, right? Everything you've taken into your body, it's stored. And I know that this is the source of actually pretty much 98% of disease, whether it's emotional or mental or physical, there usually is actually an interdimensional cause for these bodies to become, um, you know, I'm trying to think of the word, like broken in some way. Our bodies are meant to operate in peak capacity. They're not meant to break down. And they do because, you know, we often dump the responsibility of processing our emotions onto our body, right? Think of all the times that we have used a vice or just, you know, overeaten, we're like, oh shit, I feel really stressed. Let me just eat a lot of food. And we don't realize that we're actually through that, through doing that, dumping the responsibility of equalizing our energy body onto the physical body. And that's not the physical body's job. And so if you give all these jobs that are not actually the physical body's job, then it will get too tired and break down, right? And so the key is to actually begin to realize that processing your emotions is something that you can do. And processing your past traumas and your triggers is something that you can do as well. And you do this by actually carving out time to literally spend with your body and with yourself in love and compassion. And so the meditation practice, you know, is just a scanning practice. So you're bringing your awareness through your body, checking in with your body. When you close your eyes, it's supposed to feel like excitement and joy and love. Now, if, when you close your eyes, you don't feel that way in your whole body, 
then it means that you're not in your body. And if it feels like there's dense heaviness and blockages, then it means that, you know, this expensive joy, original, original conscious, divine consciousness energy is not filling the body. And so if that's not what's in the body, then what is? And then it becomes a very curious, curiosity-driven exploration. An exploration of, um, you know, what is inside of the body. And so then we are going in with our loving awareness to see, you know, maybe, you know, I feel this tension in my throat and it's because I feel like, you know, I when I say things, people don't listen or, you know, I and these are things that, you know, could be when we're children that, you know, we're, um, whatever it is that we experience, like our teachers tell us, you know, stop doing that, stop being creative and sit down or whatever. All these little things that made these boxes of energies for us to be inside of our body. Now, this is a this is part one. Part one of this practice is to cultivate subtle energy awareness. Highly important. This is how we know thyself. Right? Know thyself is not just the surface level of knowing, you know, what you like to eat and where you like to go for your nature hikes. And it's also just knowing 100% what is inside of your energy body because that is what you are. And this is how we actually move from thinking that we're a divine sovereign being to actually being fully in our body, experiencing and then expressing ourselves fully as our divine sovereign being. And so to get out of our mind, you literally just get into your body. <laughs> you just focus on your breath and you move your awareness through your body looking for blockages, looking for, you know, things that just feeling, feeling the things that are not in resonance with your point of awareness, which is always going to be divine, sovereign, creator, light, because that's what you are. And Risa says, what do we do when we hurt so bad inside? Exactly what I've just been describing. Now, there's a second part to this practice. Okay, I got to prepare myself. Let me just drink some coconut water. Part two of how we heal ourselves um, is basically going through a process, okay? And what I'm about to say is really important. And your mind immediately might think that that doesn't make any sense. And so that's why it's so important. Because what I'm about to say is basically why sometimes, you know, we have this thing that we're healing. And, you know, we're healing. We think we're doing a lot of work on it. But it's been five years and we're still working on it. Right? So it's because we're skipping this very important step. So the first step is to recognize that there is disease. Right? So Risa, this is an answer to your question. When you say, it hurts so bad, I don't want to go there. That's perfectly okay. It means that you're not ready to go there yet. That's why we have to do step one. Right? For the most part, people just try to go in and yank their inner child out. And you're like, you better heal. And it's like, no, nobody's going to heal like that. <laughs> no part of ourselves is going to want to heal in that energy. So the first step is really to just recognize that it's okay. You need to integrate the fact that you need to heal. And this can take an hour. This can take four hours. This can take a whole week. And just know that as soon as your mind begins to try to figure out ways to do things about it, you've gotten out of step one. The reason for that is that we're literally trained. Anytime that we feel bad, our society has trained us to go and look for somebody else to fix it. Right? Go to the hospital. Go to the pharmacy. Get this pill. And we're just trying to give away that power and being like, oh, this hurts. I got to find, I got to fix it, right? And so we're just so used to that that we don't realize that we can actually turn that energy inwards and say, okay, all right, I'm feeling really bad right now. And that's all step one is, whatever it is. Say you have, you know, um, uh, an overeating problem or you're smoking cigarettes or you have, you know, this tumor somewhere in your body. Whatever it is, whatever it is, the first step is to realize that healing is needed. In step one, you can't try to do anything about it because your mind, the job of your mind is to integrate. 
to integrate the fact that you need healing. And this is a step of preparation, right? You're just telling yourself, okay, look, I'm feeling bad. I would like to feel better. Eventually, I'm going to have to go in and do something. But right now, I'm just sitting with myself and recognizing that I feel bad. Now, if you feel things like, oh, this sucks, this hurts so bad, I'm never going to be able to heal this, you know, this is just too much, that's great because you are in step one and um, your physical pain is going to be the same answer because physical pain comes 98% of the time. Now, unless you literally bump into a wall, but even then, you know, our injuries often reflect the energies and parts of our body that require our attention. And so if you have chronic pain, I've had people come to the land and have their chronic pain of 30 years literally just immediately disappear because the energy here is so high that they they just like align and they're running around the hills. And the thing is, then they leave. Then they leave and they are refusing to do their own work and then the pain comes back. And so... Um, Risa, coming back to this example with you, that you're like, oh, okay, this sucks. But the thing is that you have to like focus and sit in it. It's not this passive thing where you're doing something else and you're you're distracted by something else. And we, meanwhile, this nagging energy in the back is saying, oh, this sucks. You know, I, just, I want to feel better. It's like you have to focus. And that step one is the thing you're doing. So you're literally just sitting here and, oh, Hang on one second. You're literally just sitting there and you're saying, this is really bad. I feel so bad. I feel so bad and I realize that I probably need some help. I probably need to heal. But this feels so bad and this feels, you know, really like I'm hurt and, and okay, I'm hurt. I, I was abused, and I'm really hurt. And you literally just saturate yourself with that acknowledgement energy, with that recognition energy. This is integrating, right? The, the truth is that when we don't integrate the fact that we need to heal, we'll drag that on for years and never get to it because it's like a part of us always knows that we need to heal, but we need to let that really sink in. So integrating the fact that we need to heal is step number one. And everybody wants to skip the step because we're used to just trying to fix it and know that if you just, just know that number one is key. So step one is just integrating the fact that, you know, you need healing. Now, eventually, eventually when you saturate that energy enough, there's going to be a natural impulse in your body that instead of feeling like it's too much, those parts that are yelling at you to say that is too much, they're actually going to change their narrative. They're going to recognize that you are paying attention to them for once and that you are actually willing to sit with them, right? That's a big deal. When they realize that, you know, this mature part of yourself is here, they were kind of, the energy behind it is going to shift and you're actually going to feel all of a sudden that there's a possibility that you're going to be able to reconcile and process that energy. So that's when you know it's integrated. You basically have to stay in step one until it naturally moves into step two, which usually, you know, depending on how much subtle body awareness you have, can take longer or shorter, right? Now, step two, um, step two is still not going into heal yourself. Step two is just cultivating an energy of self-love. Because we, when we're not used to loving ourselves, when we're not used to holding space for ourselves, our inner children do not trust us. That's why they're like, we're not going to heal. We're not ready. Get away from us, right? Because <laughs> if you're going to go in there and say, you're not good enough, like, you better get better, that's just going to make things worse. <laughs> And so that's why step two is actually just about cultivating an energy of self-compassion and self-love. And how you do this is literally by just sitting there and you might just gently touch your body with love, just gentleness, right? And you say, I love myself. I am worthy of love. And that might be even hard for you in the beginning. And that is a telltale sign that you are not ready yet 
to go into the next step, right? That's why your inner children are running away from you, screaming, get away from me. <laughs> it's because we have to sit there and just say, okay, I love myself. There's a part of me that is connected to this higher self energy that knows that I'm a sacred divine being. And that's good. I'm happy that Reese is saying that she cries and cries and cries when she does that. This is really good, right? That's why this is, you really need to spend time cultivating this energy and here's why. It's like you are saving up a battery so that when you're actually in the place with the part that was abused, with the part that was hurt, you actually have this big bowl of love that you can then share with that part, right? Because you've saved it up. But if you are not used to sharing your love with yourself and you go into these dark places, then you're just actually going to revert back to the inner child and react to it however you reacted at that time, which is usually to, you know, disassociate or to block it out or whatever. So how does one see this inner child if one feels deaf and dumb? First of all, stop saying that because words are powerful and you're literally calling yourself deaf and dumb and that is making it so. So first of all, I want you to know that you are a divine creator being and you have the ability to read your energy and you do this by cultivating subtle body awareness. If you need to go back, you know, 10 minutes to watch the part of the video where we talk about how to how to cultivate subtle body awareness, then we're gonna do that. And also thank you for writing that in the chat box because I know that there's some of you that are blocking this out because I'm saying, hey, you can take responsibility for your energy. And there's a part of you that is like, poop, I didn't hear that. Oh, I just didn't, didn't hear that. Okay, I, I still don't know how to do it. So you're actually doing the collective a huge favor by writing this comment in the um, chat box. So thank you for that. So, you know, um, sometimes the truth is so simple that our, bot, our, our conditioned mind is like, oh shit, like, do I need to go take a class that is like $3,000 to learn how to heal myself? <laughs> do I need to go and, you know, whatever? <laughs> anyway, um, if you want to learn or understand how to cultivate subtle body awareness, just rewind, rewind the video, maybe like 10, 15 minutes and watch that part again, because there are gonna be parts that try to ignore what I just said, because there's stuff down there that you don't wanna feel, right? But that's basically the same, you know, when you say, oh, people in society, the muggles, they refuse to wake up. Well, what do you think you're doing when you're <laughs> refusing to go inside? And, and, you know, it's like, how can we keep it's like everything, we wanna externalize things, right? We wanna call out the muggles or whatever, but like if we're all waking up into lucidity and going inside to see these things, then there won't be any muggles outside of our body. Anyway, so step two, we're cultivating this unconditional love energy. If it helps, you can literally imagine there's a vessel here in the heart and you're just literally feeling this love. And if you have a hard time cultivating that love for yourself, then think of you know, your pet or your sibling or whichever, um, whichever thing that you love the most and then you just feel that love and then you twist it and you turn it inwards and you're like, I love myself just like I love my cute cat. Oh my God, I'm so cute. I'm so cute and I'm so lovely and I, I am an innocent child of the universe and I, I deserve to be alive and you know try to just twist that around. Um, so you have cultivated this love and now we move into the next step and the next step is probably finding purpose and finding purpose is like you know if you have to just work your stupid a corporate job for the rest of your life and you're going to have no joy in your life. Like, why would you want to heal yourself just to become a slave again, right? Like, why would you want to heal yourself if you're going to be a slave? Like, there's going to be no desire to be alive, right? So you have to find a purpose. My purpose that helped me move through my healing with losing or, you know, <laughs> transitioning my baby was knowing that I have this mission on earth and that really lit me up. 
And the thing that helped me heal my eating disorder was realizing that I wanted to heal the medical system, right? I wanted to learn to heal myself to prove them wrong. And so we can all find this purpose, and that really helps empower our energy body to move through the hard stuff. And so then, finally, after the first three steps are done, you're finally ready for step number four, which is actually the self-healing process. And the self-healing process, for me, is a process of being with my body and recognizing that I actually do have everything inside me to heal. And the medical system does not want you to know that because you don't have to pay for your own energy. <laughs> But the truth is that these bodies are miraculous. And you've heard stories of people that get into a terrible car accident, and then the doctors say, you're never going to be able to walk again. And then they walk out of the hospital in a week, <laughs> right? Or some, I've heard one story of this shaman that walked out of the hospital in one day. And so these stories aren't telling us that there are superhumans out there. That These stories are telling us that you know, these physical bodies, these human bodies are capable of so much. And, you know, we begin to explore those things when we engage in our self-healing practice. And so I've had people email me saying that they, you know, went through my womb healing program and have dissolved their uterine tumors. I've had people tell me that they've had chronic pain for all their life and, you know, it's gone. And these are not miracles. This is literally the mechanics of reality, the mechanics of how the, these bodies work. These bodies are not inanimate physical objects like the system wants us to believe, but they're holographic and they're alive. And so there's a lot of information that is stored in the body that when we are able to access it with our consciousness, we can begin to restructure the energy within. And that is actually how we begin to literally play Legos with our genetics and with our cells and with our bodies. And it will look like miracles on the outside. It will look like miracles to people that are not initiated into this level of awareness. And this level of awareness is what humans are supposed to have because this is kind of like the instruction manual for our physical body. And so... Whew. Hoo -wee. It's getting hot in here. So I just want to talk about this step here because this is probably the most important thing. Some of us have been working on something for so long. Um, I'm confused about the holographic part. What does that mean? So um, when I say holographic, I mean that there... So if we close your eyes, you can feel that, you know, well, I can feel that I have organs and I have bones and I have the flesh and I can kind of feel where all my cells are. But beyond that, I can feel that there are many, 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 many layers of energy that are beyond just the organs, right? And so this is, like, I say that that is holographic because it's almost like your consciousness can perceive the spatial, dimensional information that is beyond the physical, and the way that you cultivate that, again, this is not because I'm a superhuman and I know how to do these things. I have literally spent the last seven years doing this subtle body energy awareness meditations for at least two hours a day. When I was, you know, when I'm going through a big healing thing, like being abducted by reptilians and getting raped, like that takes maybe a whole week of just being in my energy and being in the hall of rhythm and reading all the information. So at this point, I have probably meditated for thousands and thousands of hours, and that is how I activated this abilities inside, right? Which means that all of you can do it too. This is just the mechanics of our body. This is not that I'm some amazing, you know, I am amazing, and so are you, but it's not that I'm special, right? We all have these bodies. We're all made of God light. We can all go in and practice our subtle body, body awareness. It's just that how can we find the motivation to do that, right? How can we fully understand that that is the most important thing we have to do because that's where the false matrix is. That's where the, where the false matrix is hiding. And if you want to create heaven on earth, you have to go in 
and do this because we have to create the vibration of heaven on earth inside of our own body. We are the creator beings on this planet. We are the guardians of the frequency on this planet. I have a story in my book about these ancient gatekeeper communities where we used to literally do ceremony to channel cosmic energy to fuel life on this planet. That is the power that we have when we relate to the planet in our correct geometry or correct genetics. And so, whew, we have to create the frequencies of heaven on earth inside our bodies in order to flow that creation energy through our body. Just know that that is literally our superpower. Like, if we do that, the external reality, the hologram will change. And I, it's like, without that practice, okay, here's a good example synchronicity. We've all experienced synchronicity. We all experience how the reality outside of us seem to be related to our internal consciousness because we keep seeing, re you know, we keep seeing repeating numbers outside of ourself and bumping into people that we know. And so synchronicity is just the beginning of that activation of that level of awareness of knowing that what's inside is actually connected to the fabric of reality. Right? Knowing that the synchronicity is actually the beginning of that process and that there's a lot more to understand. And that if you can experience synchronicity, then you understand that your internal energy body is intimately connected to the external reality fabric of reality. And so we are literally then knowing that when we are creating the frequency of heaven on earth, and let me just exemplify how real this is for you, okay? I know that you can think, well, you know, like you're not yelling at other people to wake up. You're not doing anything. So I work in the energy realms. I'm really good at that. And that is why Spirit literally gave me a house in the middle of freaking nowhere so I can do my work. And one day I was in the bath and I was removing J seals from my body and the planetary body. And I did this for three hours. And I could feel that I was doing some major things, right? And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if I even did anything. And then I got out of the bath, and I kid you not, the astral assholes had um, possessed my neighbor to point a rifle scope through my window. And... <laughs> That only lasted like 10 to 20 minutes because they didn't really have enough energy to possess him that much longer. And he was drunk. But it goes to show you that, you know, this work, like they don't want you to know how powerful you are. If they got so scared that they like tried at that level of intimidation techniques to me, like interdimensionally, I know that I'm onto something, right? Things like that don't just happen by accident. And so... This is the level of power we have. They don't want you to know this. They don't want you to fully embody your creator consciousness. They want you They want you to be on Facebook yelling at people about how they're sheep. They want you to go, I mean, obviously I'm on the computer yelling right now. So <laughs> there's a level to this that, you know, eventually like you do want to share things that you have discovered. But there's like a level to this that if you're not doing any of your inner work and you're just on the computer, you know, yelling about things, you're not actually doing anything. <laughs> so we have to reclaim our divine sovereign creatorship, especially if we resonate with being a light worker, being a star seed. This is how we do it. This is how we create new earth by anchoring those energies completely in the body. So the next step of healing ourselves is to be present with our body and recognize our power. And for example, when I start to tune into my body, the first thing that I'll do is I'll just kind of move it gently. And the subtle movement is going to show me like where I can move my body freely and where there's little kind of tension and hooks and density. Now, I'm really 
sensitive at this point. And so I can pretty much always know what's going on in my body. But if it takes you a while longer, or if you need to go back to cultivating subtle body awareness to figure out where in your body you need to work on, do that. And so say we're working on our left shoulder today. So we're starting our session, self-healing ritual, and we're just tuning into our body. Uh, first, just breathing in. Um, let's actually do this together. This will be an interesting thing that I haven't experimented with. So let's do this together. And actually, as we do this together, I'm also going to go in and just start to clear those parasitic uh, construct energies that I promised that we were going to do today. So um, yeah, let's just get started. So I want you to actually do an active meditation today where you're sitting up. And you're just gently moving your body right to left, really gently, almost like your body is a soft thing, like a uh, seaweed or something, right? And you're just moving and seeing how flexible and movable your neck and spine is. Now, for most of us, if we're never doing this work, we're going to be pretty tense and awkward. Right? Our body's going to be like, oh. That's when you know you really need this. <laughs> and just know that, you know, this really took many, many, many years. I went through a lot of trauma, so my body was fucked. I can't believe I just swore. So I'm going to just gently move your body really gently. Ooh, and you actually notice that even when you're moving, you're beginning to relax the body, and you're already kind of loosening up. OK, so for this example of the left shoulder here, and I'm pulling this energy out of the collective, so some of you are going to resonate with this. Let's see. So this energy um, is connected to caring about what other people perceive us as and so as to create an artificial personality or self or try to be loved, try to be liked. Um, and of course, the other side of that energy is then not completely recognizing how perfect and lovable you are just as you are. And so... I want to go in, so I'm feeling this pain, right? This is coming up as a tension and a pain in the shoulder. And so first, what I want to do is actually just go over here and just gently connect with it. And you can notice that as soon as you put your hand on there, and this is actually when we take out that big bottle of self-love juice that we cultivated in step two, right? We're like, oh, yeah, I, had, I saved that up, so now I have it. And I'm going to be like... Oh, I, I love myself. I am beautiful. And again, it's not really the words. I'm just saying the words to help you connect with the energy, but it's really an energy, right? It's like, ah, hmm. And so, some of you that are sensitive are already going to start crying at this point. You're going to be surprised by how the body responds to love. The body's ready to let things go, right? And uh, my amazing is the person that created Network Spinal. His name is Donnie Epstein. I saw this quote by him recently that said, you can't let go of things you're not holding on to. And that blew my mind because <laughs> it's really true. Right? OK, and so the thing is that when you're um, going in to explore this, and some of the other tools that I use, they're what I call the internal body's medicines, the body's internal inherent tools or medicines. And so it's sound, it's breath, it's touch or pressure. And sound also includes you know, invocation or mantra. And sound also includes you know, just making high crazy sounds like <laughs> Sometimes your body just really wants to do that. And society is like, you can't do that. You can't be crazy. You can't express your prim primal self. And so, you know, that's how these energies get locked up because we're trying to be proper and normal all the time. So whatever it is that the body needs, movement, right? Movement, being able to move those tensions and pressure, 
and energy and meditation and intention. These are our internal medicines that we're using. And so I invite you to just be with your body and just take a couple of breaths, close your eyes. And uh, we're about to initiate our healing process here. So I always tell people, like, if you're not in a mental space to, you know, be in a deep healing space right now, I understand you can come back to the recording later. If you're driving or anything, definitely don't, you know, participate. It's dangerous. And so if you're ready to head into a healing process, let's do step one first, right? Just think of one thing that you like to work on or if you don't know, Close your eyes and tune into your body and see if your body will literally show you a place that you want to work on. Right? You just be naturally drawn to it or it just come up in your mind or you literally feel a tension or a density there and just trust whatever comes up. Trust yourself. So next, we're just going to pull in from source this energy of absolute cosmic self-love and self-acceptance. Knowing that you are so worthy to be alive, you're so beautiful, and you're a deserving, unique fractal of source. So I truly love myself. I am brilliant. I am beautiful. I love myself. I am so appreciative of this body. Just going to build up some of this love energy. And now just think about that reality on earth when everybody is free and so happy to be alive and in co-creation and in playfulness and that new earth reality, right? That is why we're all on this call. That is why you've been you know, attracted to this call is because you want to create that reality for all beings on this planet. So that is a great purpose, a great motivation. And so recognize that, you know, we can't see that reality external, outside of ourselves until we anchor and, and embody those energies inside. And so that is why we're going to Go to the hard places and do the emotional processing that is difficult. And so next, we're just going to bring our loving awareness into the body. Bring it to any place in your body where you might need that loving support right now, especially if you have a physical pain, a physical manifestation of dis-ease, know that the body is super hyper intelligent and that, you know, your higher self spirit energy can heal anything, even if the stupid medical system tells you otherwise. So now as we go into this healing process, just allow your body to move in whichever way it wants. If your hand is guided or your hand feels drawn to any place in your body, place it there and maybe you'll be guided to apply pressure. We're really just pulling apart gently. This gentleness is really important because sometimes when we're hurt, we want to just yank it out, right? We have a blockage. We just want to be like, I want to fix this. Like, get out. I don't want... So that is actually a resistance and hurting energy that ends up hurting you more. So you really want to have that patient self-love energy. Again, that's why we have built it up. And we want to really just gently give ourselves the loving attention that we all need. Okay? So if you need to make noises, if you need to move, if you need to massage yourself, if you need to cry... And Or if you just want to sit there in stillness to receive these frequencies, whatever it is, follow that love. Make sure that the expression that you have is a pure love and recognition that you are a divine, beautiful, wanted child in an infinitely abundant and benevolent universe. 
So we're going to go ahead and go into our healing ceremony today. And again, I invite you to allow your body to be seen and to be free to be itself and to be recognized for the incredible, intelligent, loving, miraculous thing, <laughs> being, living creature that it is.
who are ready to move your awareness down into the lower chakras, into the sacral, the root where the emotions might be there. And this is a good opportunity as we're all in this field together. We're supporting each other. I am here with you. And just feel into this love that I feel for you as a perfect being. Now I feel that you are infinitely worthy of support and love and freedom and joy. And in this moment, maybe allow yourself to just sink in there. Know that you won't be overtaken by this emotion. Know that you have a higher self and a presence. And that you can just almost like popping a balloon, just let it out. of creation we are commanding for a complete clearing in all dimensions and all of time space of all parasitic energies and patterns and woundings and identities related to this energy we're commanding for a clearing of all dimensional energies and patterns relating to parasitism whether that means it's codependency or entitlement knowing that some of these subconscious programs actually are the energies which allow interdimensional entities and implants to be there in the first place and so as we're clearing out all parasitic implantation in all dimensions and all of time space I'm feeling this predominantly in the solar plexus all patterns of distortion in energy exchange and we are restoring the original coding of the sacredness of co-creation this is the false matrix program where you know you think oh you know I worked all week and I made this money and it was hard so that means you know, I can just spend it in a way that is not responsible because something outside of me is more powerful than me anyway. And so I don't actually have to take responsibility for my decisions and how I create and how I relate to energy. So we're clearing this energy is moving into the sacral and the root as well. Almost like this slug that's just over your energy body. You're just clearing this out. Whoo. Reclaiming our sacred sovereignty and empowerment and our responsibility as creator beings. Taking responsibility to make creator level decisions in every moment, in every breath, knowing that this is how we create heaven on earth, on the ground. And source of creation, we're commanding for a complete clearing and dissolution of all distortion programming relating to sexual misery. To believing that the false matrix is your source of life. source of creation we are resolving energetic imprints in all dimensions and all of time space 
Relating to the energy of parasitism, either of actively engaging or being parasited off of, is the codependent circle of energy that we are completely lifting from all dimensional bodies of ourself in this now, including all genetic lineages. And again, we're pulling in the original coding of our essence of sacred co-creation and sacred reciprocity between our self and our body, our self and our energy, ourself and our family members, our friends, our community, our society, and at large with the planetary energies, with the universal creation energies as well. And you can begin to feel that alignment begin to come in, and that alignment energy kind of just dispels, pushes out with ease the distortion and the fallen energies of parasitism. coming in here which speaks to the power of our essential sovereignty and the feeling of that power the feeling of our inherent divinity because this dissolves all the patterns of the victim and victimization cycles or we feel like you know oh this thing it has power over me it's abused me and that's why I'm miserable I'm miserable because this thing this thing this other thing it hurt me and I'm powerless against it, right? We're pulling in the frequency that is beyond that karmic cycle that's just in the pure recognition of the truth of our source, creation, divinity. And infused with that divine love is a high level of forgiveness and reconciliation and the ability to reclaim our energetic integrity who there I am a divine sovereign creator being I deserve to feel pleasure and joy and fulfillment to move into your body which is its home and in that process scurrying <laughs> the critters and the distortions that do not belong there Self-love feels so good. It's the coolest thing. It's what all the cool kids are doing. <laughs> How are you guys feeling?
I can feel that the energy will continue to move. I think that we started a good process here. And, you know, this is really the work that accelerates our divine creator beingness. I, I know that I come off as being super spiritual, but I promise you I have never worked that hard on being spiritual. And you don't have to either because a divine creator, spiritual being is what you naturally are. And the reason why you're not experiencing that, it's not because you have to work really hard to be spiritual, but it's because there are energies and vibrations inside the multidimensional body that are in conflict with your higher self energy. And so the more, you know, this, um, I feel like I've just always been very guided to focus on this healing because I've honestly never tried to be a spiritual person. I never tried to, you know, astral travel or remote view or all of these skills naturally activated as I lifted the base of my pyramid up, my lower chakras, as I healed myself and came into vibrational integrity inside of my body. These vessels are consciousness. We are naturally cosmic divine creator beings. And so this is not something we have to try hard to do. Even though a lot of religions, <laughs> they have tried to tell you those lies. <laughs> but I know you can feel this vibration of the truth that you are naturally, originally, a divine, beautiful, incredible, lovely, perfect, beautiful being. And so as we begin to lift these distortion energies inside of our body and clear them and reconcile with our wounded and abused and traumatized and hurting parts, you'll notice that you're actually lighter, right? You didn't try to get lighter. All you did was reconcile with the parts of ourself. So we're working on our energetic mastery, right? Our energetic sovereignty. Um, so vibrational integrity all right so very great this has been a great foundation because tomorrow we are going to talk about ai artificial intelligence and i have a very different perspective on what that is it has very little to do with machines actually <laughs> and more to do with the most valuable thing in the universe what is it Universal creation consciousness. <laughs> and so what does that have to do with AI? And how is AI infiltrating and hijacking that energy? Hmm. We'll talk about it tomorrow. And we're excited. But really, this was probably the most important thing. I always tell people this hidden secret. Like, it's really not rocket science. We just have to love ourselves. But it's so hard when the whole society has really damaged that, you know, mind-body connection, which is the source of all dis-ease. And so thank you so much for tuning in today. And I'm sending you so, so, so much love. If you enjoyed this transmission and if you think that it would be helpful, go and share this video with your friends, with your family, it would be so appreciated. And I love you all so, so, so much. And I will see you soon.